And we're back talking about hydrogen as a potential energy source with David Booth, who's a senior writer with Driving.ca. David, before the break, uh, we are talking about hydrogen-powered uh, vehicles that basically operate like an internal combustion engine, and we're talking about the potential cost for these vehicles. I guess that we're in a situation where, with any new technology, the cost starts off high, and then typically it, it comes down low. Is that your sense, where will these vehicles well, will end up when they eventually do hit the market? I've got a very good example of this for you. Um, right now, depending on who you're talking to, it could be anywhere between six and ten dollars US to produce a kilogram of hydrogen to sell it. That'd be the cost. Mm -hmm. That compares to you know you you buy hydrogen by the kilogram, not by the gallon. But mm -hmm. I had somebody on one of my programs uh, from uh, Australia that was not only developing hydrogen from salt water instead of um, uh, fresh water. He was electrolyzing seawater, which we have lots of versus fresh water. But he also promised to produce it for a buck 50 US a kilogram by 2030. That would put it when you do all the conversions for efficiency and everything else to approximately the same cost of, uh, of a liter of diesel right now. In other words, by 2030, Mm. The, we will have moved far enough ahead that the cost of operating a hydrogen fuel cell car will be approximately the same as operating a diesel-powered car today is. That's a huge advance in not so many years. Well, that, that certainly sounds very encouraging for consumers who want uh, to be able to fill up their vehicles at an affordable rate. Uh, one of the questions I know with hydrogen that we sometimes hear about is the concern around, uh, you know, how it's a very combustible energy source. Obviously, if Toyota is putting a lot of time and energy behind developing uh, hydrogen-powered vehicles, that they feel they can be safe enough on the roads. Do you have any thoughts about that? And and also tied in with that, are, are governments ready to start approving this type of vehicle for use in Canada? Well, I'll answer the first part of that question, uh, which will help the second, is they're already for sale. Like you can buy a Toyota Mirai in Canada. There's a, I don't know, how, I think there's actually a fleet of taxis either on Vancouver Island or in Vancouver. I think it's Vancouver Island that is operating, I think, 20, 20 or 30 um, Mirais. And I think they also use some for deliveries, you know, last minute deliveries as well. So they're already operating. Uh, Safety-wise, I've seen uh, the tanks uh, that they store the hydrogen in, in Toyotas and also from in BMWs, and they're hugely mm -hmm. safe things. I mean, the, the, um, the tank is varying, um, you know, various layers, alternating layers of steel and carbon. Uh, and, and, and it's mm -hmm. enormously thick. They can, I think they operate around 7,000 PSI and they are extremely safe. Um, I talked to one BMW engineer uh, in a case of a crash, the only thing left will be the tank. It is so strong. You know, I mean, you could get hit mm. by, a, by a diesel truck and it still won't collapse. So is diesel safe enough for us? I'll put it to you this way. If you were going to start producing gasoline cars today and say, I've got this new idea, let's do gasoline. Um, it'd be very difficult to do because it's so unsafe and mm. people would be asking the same questions they are as they are with hydrogen. It's the best way I can answer mm. the question. Well, that's fascinating. It, uh, it, it's, I think it's always positive when consumers have more choice because it ultimately helps lead to more competition and push down prices and so forth. I'll ask you in the, the final minute that we have here to pull out your crystal ball and tell us what does a, a typical car lot look like, say, 10 years from now? Are we going to see more electric or are we going to see more hydrogen? Any thoughts around that? I think that the majority or if not the plurality will be battery powered. You know, I mean, the majority of people take one or two long trips a year and the rest of the time, you know, drive around town. For them, a battery powered vehicle is perfect. Um, for those of us, and this includes me, who drive long distances, say every second, third weekend, 
or you know, or thinking of driving across Canada, or we're snowbirds and we drive to Florida. Battery power is, it's. I don't think it'll ever be there. It's certainly not there now. So what split? You know, I would David, say we're gonna, there'll be some. We're gonna have to wrap it up. up. Okay, sorry. Off. I have to wrap it up there, but thank you for joining us and your insight on this. Thank you.